Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan, so if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the Discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter. Social media. Follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you want to see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, and today I'm here to talk about Season 6, Episode 6 of FX's Snowfall, entitled Concrete Jungle. <laughs> I don't I don't even know, I, I I got my notes, I that was a lot, y'all, that, that was a lot. I have spent the better part of the last 24 hours trying to just come to grips, not come to grips, because it's a show, it's fictional, but... Obviously, I've watched a lot of shows and a lot of movies over the course of my life. Just over the course of the last two years I've been doing this channel, there's a shit ton, of, shit ton of content here. You guys know, I watch a lot of shit. Multiply that over the course of my life, I've seen a lot of on-screen deaths. Um, gun to my head, if you ask me to name the ones that affected me the most, I probably wouldn't even be able to name more than five. Uh, you know, more, more often than not, I feel nothing for an on-screen death. You know, the two that stand out to me the most are probably... Um, Oberyn Martell on Game of Thrones and Opie on Sons of Anarchy. Spoilers, I'm sorry if you haven't watched either of those two shows inexplicably, but um, both of those characters were my favorite characters on the show at that time, and both of those deaths were entirely unexpected and very fucking violent. This, though, this one, <laughs> this is my new number one, y'all. I, 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 <laughs> I cried on this one. And when I say I cried, I'm not talking about my eyes welled up and, and I'm like, man, fuck. And like a single, like I, maybe I blinked and then like the welled up tear got pushed out of my eye when I blinked and just rolled down. No, I cried. <laughs> and I, don't mean, like, I wasn't like, <laughs> like I wasn't bawling, but like it, it was more than just like I pushed out a single tear too. Like here's the thing. They telegraphed the fuck out of this. Like, so much so that it actually started to wonder if they were trolling us. So let, let, let's get into it, right? So re Jerome returns from the, <laughs> the day of day drinking that <laughs> we saw in the previous episode, completely shit-faced, and he tells Louis he's out. He's done. He's done killing motherfuckers. He's done selling drugs. He's done trying to kill his nephew. Like, I'm done. I'm out. It's, this is it. No more. And the next morning... He wakes up sober. And Louis does the hard sell here. And, and make no mistake, the, I just need a little bit more time. That's the hard sell. Because it's like, because that person automatically goes, oh, fine. How long do you need? Two more days? All right, two more days. And then I'm out. And it works. She gets a page from Scully. She's like, ah, oh, shit, I got to do this drop with Scully. And Jerome is like, you focus on what you got to do. You get your hair right. I'll do the drop for you. And then I'm out. I said, oh, Lord, they finna kill Jerome. <laughs> because, I mean, like, right, that's what they do. It's right out of, like, fucking screenwriting 101. It's that that cop on his last day on the force that's going, yeah, it's my last day on the force. After today, I'm gonna retire, and me and the wife are gonna go, go to the Bahamas, and we're gonna live the rest of our lives in happiness and joy. And then that person gets killed on their last day on the job. Like, that's, 
It's screenwriting 101. It's having a bazillion times. So Jerome's like, yeah, I'll do this one last thing. And then I'm out. I said, oh, shit. They about to kill Jerome. So um, I looked at that moment. I thought, this is so heavily telegraphed that this might be a red herring. Like, they might be faking me out. Because it's too obvious they're going to kill him, right? But here's the thing. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back just for a brief moment. If you have a death like that, where you look at that and you go, we nailed it for this character. Who gives a fuck? I don't give a fuck if I telegraphed it. I'm still going to knock you over the fucking head. It doesn't matter if you know it's coming. I'm about to knock you the fuck out. And that's exactly what happened here. And that's why I'm not mad that they telegraphed it. Because they telegraphed the fuck out of it, and I still fucking cried. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they did it right, goddammit. But anyway, so when Louis is captured uh, at the horse ranch or whatever by Kane's people, and we ultimately reach the standoff between her, Jerome, and Kane, I'm feeling three things. One, I feel like all three of them ain't making it out this scene. Two... It's probably Jerome that ain't making it because they telegraphed the shit. But three, they could be faking me out. Maybe it's Louis that dies. Maybe Leon walks in and he dies. I don't know. Either way, I'm sitting there mad fucking nervous, right? Excuse me. They start shooting and we see Jerome is hitting the chest. And now I'm reacting normally like I would to a devastating death, right? You know, like... uh. Still with that, I, like with, with when I say reacting to a norm, normally reacting to a devastating death, it's it's a it's a reaction of like, oh, I love this character, oh, but but also, it's not real. Like it's just a this is a make believe show. So it's like, oh man, this is a great scene. I love this character. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll, actually, I'll tell you guys exactly how I reacted. I was like, oh, fuck, man, like. Not Jerome, man. Shit. Like, I'm not even, I can't even look at the screen. I'm like, uh, so what I'm doing this, I was actually doing that. Fuck, man. Uh, Jerome, fuck. It, that, damn, man, this sucks. I'm like, I, I and I, I start speaking out loud. I'm like, I knew this was coming. They telegraphed it, but fuck, it still hurts, man. But then Franklin and Leon walk in. And that, you know, it went from, this is already a great great as in like in magnitude uh an emotional and impactful moment not just in this episode not just for this show but for all time that is a great death scene already even before franklin and leon walk in and then franklin comes in and is like unk unk the unk it, that that was it that that was where i that i lost it and again i again try to save face here i wasn't balling but, like, man, if that didn't fucking break you, you must not have a goddamn soul, man. Because, like, anybody who has experienced, like, the death of a parent or even, like, someone who's intr instrumental in raising you or was instrumental in raising you, you can relate to that almost kind of, like, it's almost like a childlike response. It's like you see the body and it's like you revert back to the kid who is now in disbelief. And it's almost like you don't even understand death anymore. And Franklin's just like, huh? Uh, and the, the 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 realization, the disbelief, it, it it was so relatable. And then the journey, uh, Jerome's a day one character who we're losing with only four episodes left in the series in the sixth season. He's been around a long fucking time, and we've seen Jerome evolve better than any character on the entire show. They're trying to do it with Leon now, but like the, the Jerome's character arc has been incredible. Uh, you know, we've seen him evolve. We've seen him grow. For some of us, we've probably seen Jerome grow into our favorite character on the show. So, again, Franklin coming in with the unk, at least for me, it was like a trigger. For all those good moments between the two of them and the show's past, and then you think of all the conflict they've had this season and, and the end of last season, and you think of how Franklin put all that aside to call Jerome and tell him to, to come get Louie. So then when he comes in with the unk, all of the growth, all the evolution, the effort they put into the relationship between these two characters, of Franklin and Jerome, it all comes flooding in. And at least for me, that's when I realize I've never been more emotionally impacted by a death than this one. And it's because, in short, it was flawless execution and a perfect death for an incredible character 
after a truly standout acting performance all season from Amin Joseph. It was just, it was perfect, and I will never forget the experience of watching that for the rest of my life. It was remarkable. It was it was it was perfectly executed, and it's very rare you see shows go for something that's meant to hit you like a ton of bricks and and execute on it flawlessly. And it, it, it's all that buildup, all that evolution. When you watch, when you think about where Jerome started and where Franklin started and where they ended up now, the whole the the three goddamn letters, just that uh uh, like that that shit. It's amazing how they conveyed so much in three fucking letters, man. It was incredible, and like I I I, I, I I'm gonna keep going, <laughs> but maybe I'll maybe I'll keep talking about it. I don't know, but we'll see. But you want to know what's really wild though? Jerome's death might make it easy to forget this, but I'm pretty sure we're meant to understand that that pimp raped Louis. Like, there's an example of a scene. That's horrific without showing you shit. Like, we didn't need to be subjected to the fucking, like, unimaginative, uh, some guy holding Louie down while we're watching her face, yelling and screaming. She's writhing, trying to get away. And he's, like, trying to pull his pants down. You see him pulling at the back of his pants. He's, like, thrusting. Like, that gravity shit. We didn't need all that. And this was still one of the best. Uh, and, again, when I say best, obviously, you don't. You don't portray rape in a best sort of way, but as far as like maximum uh, effect with minimal gratuitous uh, visuals, this was the best portrayal of a rape I've seen because they did it in a way that was even more harrowing because Franklin arrives just after that pimp character had bent Louie over that chair, right? So we think like, oh shit, it's about to happen. But then they cut and we see Franklin arriving at this location where he's walking in, right? And Franklin's walking through, everyone casual as fuck. Like, they're playing pool, they're drinking, they're smoking, everybody kicking it. But then you hear Louis screams in the background. And you still see everyone being cool about it. And you come to understand what's happening. And then you see Franklin trying to, like, play it cool. Like, like you see Franklin almost kind of, like, acknowledge that he hears it and then have to, like, push through it kind of. Like, like trying to be cool about it, like, pretend like he doesn't hear it until it's time to get busy. And that's when all the guns start guns start firing and then everything happens so fast but like and even during that final sequence you can see like uh louis messing with her pants uh you know they're like halfway not halfway down but like not at her waist and you know you're supposed to come to understand that that, that this actually happened like it, it happened you know what i'm saying it didn't almost happen it happened and i don't know like, I, I thought that was a really great way to portray a rape without uh, I, I don't want to say without triggering people because, you know, if you're somebody who, who is a victim of rape, you may you probably don't need to see it to be triggered by it. But not showing, the, the like I said, the actual thing happening and having people be casual on screen while you're hearing the screams in the background, that was worse than, than seeing it. I've seen it on fucking TV a bunch of fucking times. Like, that was worse. And I thought that was a really good way of doing that. So um, that was, uh, my hat's off to them for portraying something that's already horrific, as horrific as you could possibly have done it. <laughs> um, but, you know, once the episode ended, I legit just, like, walked back and forth for, like, 20 minutes in place, trying to, like, wrap my head around um, how effective the Jerome shit was, why it was so effective, and just trying to, like, come down from an episode of television where, like, the final 20 minutes or so were just so fucking intense. And to end that way... Man, like, like, what a fucking experience this fucking episode was, man. But, um, I guess we can move on to talk about the things that are comparatively inconsequential <laughs> to, 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 to what happened with Jerome. Um, Gustav, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit some of these things pretty quick. Because, uh, like, really, we don't spend a lot of time with things outside of, uh, this situation with Franklin and Jerome and, and Kane. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Gustavo agrees to help Franklin catch Teddy if he gives him a meal up front. And he gives him some passports. And then he also makes Franklin promise to kill Teddy. Teddy and it's like, <laughs> Franklin's like, that's an easy promise. I was going to do that anyway. <laughs> um, uh, Veronique's mom wants her and Veronique to leave Franklin. But v Veronique's like, y'all stand by my man. You can go ahead and fuck off. I, okay. All right. Um, Teddy seems, I think, less upset about the death of his father 
and more upset at how the act of killing his father is an affront to him and who he is. And I think that's an interesting but accurate portrayal of the Teddy character. Like, I, I feel like that mindset fits within the Teddy character's M.O. Like, he seems more personally offended that Franklin would disrespect him by killing his father than that the fact that his father is dead. And he says, like, I don't, you know, I don't, I didn't have a relationship with the father. He says that directly. But the way, he's still upset about it. So you're only left to land that, well, if he's not upset, if he doesn't have a relationship with the father, but he's still upset, it has to be because of the insult to him that Franklin would do that. Like, how dare you do that to me? Like, I, I think that's such an interesting direction for the Teddy character to look at his father's death as an affront to him rather than like, I can't believe my father's dead or I can't believe you would kill my father. It's more like, I can't believe you would do that to me. Who the fuck do you think you are to make a move like that on me, Teddy goddamn McDonald? Like, that's what that felt like, and I like that. Um, Teddy also tries to make a deal with Ruben, which I thought was surprising. Um, he ends up leaving that scene and is like, yeah, next time I see you, I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker. And I, <laughs> I thought that was interesting, but I'm, I'm curious as to what... Uh, what the purpose of that scene was for Ruben to virtue? I don't. I, did Ruben even speak in that scene? I'm like, I'm not, my voice went high as fuck. Did Ruben even speak in that scene? I don't know if he did, but I, I might need to watch it again. But I'm curious to the purpose of that scene. If it's unless it's meant for nothing more than to inform us that Teddy tried. I don't know. Um, another thing about Teddy. At one point, while Teddy's all dejected about how Franklin insulted him by killing his father. <laughs> Parissa wants to know where they stand. And only a completely shit character like Parissa would request a relationship status update to a man who is grieving the death of his father. Only a shit character like Parissa. Parissa is terrible, you guys. I hate this fucking character. And Teddy essentially professes his love for this piece of shit in this scene. And in stark contrast with Jerome's death, this is probably one of the worst scenes in the show's history. I could not possibly be bothered to give a fuck about Teddy professing his love for this truly terrible, underdeveloped character in their truly terrible, underdeveloped relationship. Fuck me. I hate Teddy's fucking girl, Parissa. That shit was terrible. That's the most romantic thing in it. Shut the fuck up, Parissa. My God, you are annoying. <laughs> if they want to balance... My Jerome sadness with some happiness. Kill this bitch, please. I fucking hate Parissa. I'm sorry if you're offended by the use of... No, I'm not sorry if you're offended by the use of that word. It's a word. Get used to it. Um, another thing I wanted to mention earlier and failed to do. Did Franklin somehow convince one of Kane's people to help with this attack? Like, the one guard... Oh, I, I'm not even going to say did he. I think he very clearly did. But how and why? Well, not the why is kind of clear, but how? Uh, so the one guard stops the other guard from checking Franklin's car when he pulls up to Kane's hideout. And we, of course, we come to later find out, which I think we all assumed in the moment, Jerome was in the trunk of that car. And then that same guard leaves and he tries to convince the other guard to go with him. And then another really fucked up part of this whole scene is the other guy doesn't go because he fears missing out on the gang rape of Louie. And then he's even like, I don't care if he's beat up and crying. Like, what the <laughs> like yo that was a crazy fucking scene this is a wild fucking episode man like i'm sitting here like yo did he just say that like because that was earlier when he's like yo i don't care if she beat up and crying and then he's like yo you want to roll to the store he's like nah i don't want to miss out like he's making it sound like it's like he's making it sound like it's a new episode of snowfall like i don't want to miss out <laughs> like you don't want to miss out on the gang rape of the woman that kane's been beaten on and but branding with his initial like, what the fuck, man? This is a wild episode. Um, yeah, I... I, I gotta come down on it. Like, I, I, I have not watched this episode a second time. I will, maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if I will. I don't know if I want to... I don't know if I want to experience that again. Like, that was, that was a lot, man. But um, I want to close out with a couple of thoughts real quick, and I can't wait to hear what you guys thought about this episode, man. Or what you guys thought about Jerome. You think I, do you think I was doing too goddamn much? Or did that scene hit you guys in the nuts and... Or titties like <laughs> like it did with me uh close with a couple of thoughts though i love when jerome is trying to get in contact with buckley and he can't <laughs> because buckley's too busy smoking crack at the time 
And I'm writing my notes and I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, he tries to page Buckley, but Buckley's too busy smoking crack at the time. And this is going to be an obscure reference that probably none of you are going to get. But it reminded me of like this random Simpsons joke that ends with Grandpa Simpsons going, which was the style at the time. And like, I don't know. I put that in my notes. Like he was smoking crack at the time. I, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Especially given that Jerome told him like, next time you get caught with, next time you get on drugs, you out of here. Stay off the drugs. And now Jerome's not going to be around to enforce that. Um... From the moment when Jerome is at Scully's and finds out about Louie, this whole episode just takes the fuck off. Like, this was like, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes left. He's talking about bringing the cavalry. You got Leon ready to mount up. You got Scully ready to mount up. Like, I'm getting hyped. Like, let's fucking go. Like, everybody rolling up the Kane's joint. That whole scene was out intense. I was nervous the whole fucking time. But you knew... While you were in it for the excitement, that it wasn't going to end well, and it didn't. R.I.P. to Jerome, but shout out to this show for pulling off a major character death flawlessly. I don't get to say flawlessly very often. I think I, I said, I think I said that, that I said the bear was a perfect show, and this was a perfectly executed death. So my hats off to Snowfall. My hat is off to Amin Joseph for. Um, ending this series with not just a perfectly executed death, but with, in my opinion, an Emmy-worthy acting performance this year, which, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to watch this or, or nominate him for that. But, man, if you see... I mean, Joseph, if you ever see me, if you ever see this video of me talking about your shit, I think you fucking deserve it, man. You fucking crush this shit. And I'm not just any old motherfucker that watches, you know, I, I've only seen three shows. So, of course, I think Amin Joseph deserves an Emmy nomination. I watch everything, my guy. And I think you deserve an Emmy fucking nomination, dude. So, shout out to him, man. Shout out to them for pulling this off. Uh, incredible fucking episode, man. Can't wait till next week. I will see you guys then. And until then, peace.